May you have a blessed day today. As we gather again for a time of reflection on the word, let us pray. God, we ask that in this day you would be with us by your spirit. Bless our hearing and our reflection on your word. Guide us by your spirit and strengthen us for the living of these days. To your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. The passage today is from Acts chapter 7, and it's just a short portion of it, so I need to give you some of the, the rest of the story. Stephen had been uh, chosen as a deacon in the church, and he proved that he was more than just a pastoral care person. He was also a very gifted preacher, and he had begun preaching in the synagogue of the diaspora Jews, who were probably Greek-speaking, and they became very angry that he was preaching Jesus. And they were also angry because they couldn't defeat him in a debate about that. So they got some false witnesses and brought him before the council. And Stephen goes before the council, and this is where the story picks up in Acts chapter 7, 55 through 60. But filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Humanity standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. This is a story about an ending, but it's also about a beginning. Sometimes we need to stand back and get a bigger picture of what is happening in stories in Scripture. In the microcosm of the worldview and experience of the early church, the expectation was that Jesus would return soon, and this overshadowed all else for them. The apostles gathered daily for worship, and the church grew with a sense of urgency. Members shared freely of their resources with those who had needs. And so the early deacons had been appointed to help take care of redistribution distribution of those provisions with prudent and fair treatment. Stephen was one of those deacons, but he not only helped with pastoral care, he was also a man of deep prayer. It is said that he spent so much time praying that his knees had calluses on them. And here in Acts, he's being, been doing signs and wonders among the people and preaching the gospel in a synagogue but these people had opposed his preaching. But they were unable to defeat him in their open debates. So they secretly induced false witnesses to say that he had blasphemed against Moses and God. Then they dragged him before the Jewish council. Stephen takes this opportunity to proclaim Jesus as having fulfilled the law and the prophets. He begins by reciting story after story of God's great deeds of love and salvation in Jewish history. From Abraham to Moses to David to the building of the temple until he finally gets to how the later Jewish leadership, both priests and kings, had treated the prophets with contempt and murdered some. Stephen equates his hearers with the stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart who resist the Holy Spirit. This intensifies their anger against him. And from his own testimony of this history, Stephen knows what's about to happen. And so this story picks up today in the text, where the deacon of compassion, the man of prayer, the prophetic voice is filled anew with the power of the Spirit to speak his final words. And what do they say? He has a vision of the glory of God and Jesus Christ sitting at God's right hand in the heavens. The intense anger of guilty consciences does not want to listen to this truth-telling. Anger does not want to hear anything, but what it wants to do is silence the truth-teller. 
So they cover their ears so they cannot hear. And then they rush together against Stephen, shouting and dragging him out of the city. And then they begin throwing stones at him. Self-righteous indignation makes this kind of mistake. Yes, it was the ending of Stephen's life. They hoped it would be the ending of the boldness of the apostles as well, because this was intended to intimidate anyone else who might preach Jesus. It has the character of a hate crime. One person is supposed to become a terrifying example of how all others will be treated if they do not toe the line of policy and doctrine. The message is conform or die or you will likewise suffer. The problem is that fear and hate do not understand the Spirit's ways or the power of love, especially of God's love, even for the perpetrators. It was the Spirit that had propelled the disciples out into the streets on the day of Pentecost, when before they had been hiding in fear. It was the Spirit that gave Moses faith to go back before Pharaoh, it was the spirit that gave David faith to pick up a stone and slay a giant. And the irony of this story is, is that Stephen prayed even as the stones fell on his dying body. While a young man named Saul watched over the coats of those who were stoning him. With the vision of glory still in his eyes, Stephen prayed the very words Jesus had prayed on the cross. Receive my spirit. And do not hold this sin against them. Amid what would call a tragic ending, God is planting a seed for a new beginning. This man named Saul would get papers of permission to go and chase Christians to other cities, to drag them back before councils, and to have them killed. What he didn't know is that God had another plan. That God would meet him on the road and he would be changed. He would soon end up proclaiming the gospel of Jesus to the whole world. There's a lot of this kind of behavior going on today in our country and world. Truth tellers. Fired from government positions. Propaganda and lies circulating, creating fears. Prophetic voices marginalized and minimized. People in powerful positions preventing services to the most vulnerable and tying the hands of service providers, hoping that the troublemakers will just disappear and die. Anger, blame, impulsive actions, selfish interests, all are driving crowds to demand foolish decisions. But perspective is what the Spirit gives to believers. Perspective sees the truth and sees the glory of God at work here and now and forever. We have a vision and perspective to pray for those who are doing the harm even. For we acknowledge we do not know who the souls are in the crowds around us or how God will turn them around and use them later in the larger story of the church. Stephen's is a tragic story, so was the cross. But they weren't the last of the story. God has a greater purpose to be revealed in the days to come. There is new life. There is joy and empowerment. There is even the possibility that some of the perpetrators will become one of us, and maybe even great in the church for the purposes of the gospel. Yes, Stephen's death emboldened those who refused to believe in Jesus and truth-telling. The great persecution did come, and the church was scattered. But wasn't that what Jesus had told them to do anyway? They had gotten pretty comfortable sitting in the Jerusalem, worshiping and fellowshipping and sharing. It was time to go out into the world. In these times, we are changed too, not just our perpetrators. The gospel of God's love for all people includes them too. If we have the spirit within us, it will pray as Stephen did in these times. Forgive them. Lord, we trust in your love and power. Do not hold this against them. 
And then we are free to live or die for the Lord because in our baptism we have already died to the old ways and live that new life. We know God's work and good purposes. Fear, hate, and selfishness cannot win against God. What we or others might call endings and beginnings in our stories are merely continuations of God's mighty deeds in revealing what God's purposes are and what cannot be stopped because God is in heaven. Life is eternal. And we have a vision that we know is true. Amen.